Hi everybody, IG here again with another Linux distro review and today I'm going to be having a look at the Arch base distribution known as Manjaro. Okay, now I'm sure most of you are aware Manjaro is an Arch based distribution that is designed to be an out of the box experience for those that want to use uh, the very popular and very customizable and very adaptable Arch Linux base. Now, for those of you who don't know what Arch Linux is, it's basically one of the most advanced yet very, very simple uh, distributions that you can basically build to your own specific needs, your own desktop manager, your own applications, your own um, background service stack, etc, etc. What Manjaro does and what the Manjaro team have decided to do is make a distribution that creates an out of the box Arch Linux experience that uh, that can then cater to a slightly more advanced Linux user or, or a new Linux user, uh, of course, based on the KISS principle of keep it simple, stupid. It comes in several different flavors, including Cinnamon, Gnome, KDE, uh, Razer QT and XFCE, which is the default. So that's what we're going to be having a look at today. So Manjaro is uh, first and foremost an XFCE desktop. Uh, that's what they started out with, but they have since branched out into many other desktop environments as well. So as far as an XFCE desktop, you of course gonna have a very lightweight system. It's gonna be very snappy because Arch, it has an Arch base. It's gonna also be very minimalist and uh, the package management is gonna be very diverse and, uh, but also very, efficient in many ways as well. So it's probably worth mentioning, first of all, how they manage packages here, as opposed to what Arch Linux does. They still, of course, use the Pac-Man package manager, just like Arch does, except they give you a few bridging tools to help you along in the process. So they don't just dump you straight into the uh, command line like you would have to do with Arch. They give you a, a nice GUI here to manage all the stuff that you would usually do with Pac-Man. So you've got uh, syncing databases, updating your system, installing packages, and really all these buttons are is they're just simple uh, sort of insert command uh, buttons instead of typing the commands manually yourself. So you can see here when I go uh, in, uh, install a particular package, I can say search for gnome do, and then it will go out and uh, resolve the de uh, dependencies and it'll give you a terminal readout of what you, what needs to be installed, the you know, approximated size and whatever, and then you can say proceed with installation. So of course, this is very, very familiar if you have done uh, package installations from the command line, because this is exactly what it reads. Uh, and then it's also worth mentioning that then when you sync the database, for example, it gives you the command that you would use to uh, to update or refresh your repositories. So that way it kind of teaches you along the way of how to do this th these things through the terminal so that when the time arises that you are used to what you're doing, uh, you can do it through the terminal. It's probably gonna be quicker and easier uh, doing it that way. Now, of course, at the same time, you can search packages, search for files, remove packages, and find package details, etc. And again, all of these commands give you different command line options so that you can repeat these processes in the terminal, thus cutting out the GUI middleman. They also have a quick link here to open up the package browser. And the package browser is just a graphical interface that you can use to explore more information about the packages that you're gonna install, where they come from, packages from the Arch user repository, uh, etc. Now, if you're not familiar with the whole uh, Arch mentality or the Arch user repository, you can go and watch uh, my other video, which I'll throw a link in uh, the description below. But it's basically a vast collection of, uh, of user maintained packages uh, for Arch that really makes it very unique and streamlining the process of, uh, of packaging pretty much every piece of software there is uh, available under Linux under one sort of umbrella. Now the reason I've spent time explaining the package management here is because Arch Linux, uh, of course, the system on which Manjaro is based, is very much a rolling release. It is bleeding edge. You're constantly at the forefront of software development. Any new piece of software or package that gets pushed out, Arch is usually the first one to get it. This is both the strength and the biggest weakness of Arch. The purpose for Manjaro is to take that strength uh, of Arch being that you do have up-to-date software and a very slipstreamed process and uh, kind of tame it down a bit so it's not as aggressive uh, as far as the updates are concerned. So that means you're gonna get a slightly more stable system and so that, that could definitely be said for Manjaro in that the packages aren't as cutting edge as what they are on the uh, default Arch Linux system. Uh, you have a few revisions back, but stable and tested enough that you can run a, a fairly well-behaved distribution. Uh, whereas by experience, um, using Arch for any period of time, you are going to have to know how to fix things if, they, if and when they break. So now with all that interesting system stuff out of the way, let's talk about XFCE for a bit and, and Manjaro's implementation of said desktop manager. Now, of course, 
XFC is a quite well matured desktop environment now, but as far as the theming is concerned, I, I, I noticed a few uh, intricacies which probably could have uh, seen a bit more attention. Uh, for example, the font smoothing by default is not the best that I've seen. There are packages available for Arch to tidy up these fonts so they don't look as blurry as what they do at the moment, but still it'd be great to see that out of the box. Now, of course, the themes that they're using are, are fairly old. They look like uh, Linux Mint 8, 9 sort of era. Uh, so I personally like the theme that they're running with, but you can kind of see they've got a slightly pixelated corners. So the theme could do with a bit more of a polish. Of course, they're using the w widespread Fianza icon set. So there's not really much to be said there. And of course, we're looking at the settings manager at the moment for XFC, which helps you change pretty much all the user level aspects of the system, uh, like you would have seen in other videos. They've got a nice utility here for Conky control, so you can add and remove components from the system information panel on the right hand side here. You can customize pretty much anything about an XFC desktop, adding widgets to the panel and removing them at will. But I think it would be great to see a few more uh, user level widgets being able to be added to the desktop. Not so much, not to the extent that KDE does, but it would be nice to have uh, just a few basic widgets there. Of course, Manjaro aims to be an out of the box operating system. So you're going to get all the codecs and all of the programs that you're going to need to get, uh, to start work on a basic level so that you've got uh, pretty much all the pre-installed applications that one would find on a user focused distribution uh, like Ubuntu or Linux Mint or any of those distributions including LibreOffice. You've got the Araj suite there for the calendar, time and time management etc. You've got Deadbeef for your music player which I'm not too fussed about. I mean it's a very lightweight music player and that's probably why they include it because it doesn't take up a whole lot of space. But of course there are plenty of music players out there to choose from. SM Player is one of the best media players out there for Linux so I think that's a great inclusion. XF Burn is very nice as well. And Internet, the standard suite, very 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 similar to what you'll see on Linux Mint except they also pre-install Skype which is pretty helpful uh, as you can install Skype on Arch but it's not as, uh, let's say it's not as streamlined as what it is on Ubuntu. We get the latest version of GIMP there as well for all your image editing needs, simple scan and view noir for your image viewer. And then development, we've got some interesting Qt development stuff here or Qt however you pronounce it and also of course the open Java development toolkit. And we've got a handful of accessories here, mostly lightweight stuff. We've got some notes, some simple clipboard managers, calculators and archiving tools there as well. So it pretty much covers the bases as far as all of your file management needs. And of course for the file manager itself you are with XFC's default which is the Thuna file manager. Uh, performance wise, it is slightly slower than uh, than what Arch Linux does, but that is simply because they are providing a system that is ready to go out of the box. It caters to a large variety of hardware and they're really trying to cover uh, they cover their bases as far as compatibility goes. You, could, you also have access to the uh, sort of the restricted drivers or the uh, non-free graphic drivers there by default as well. So it just helps to make that installation process a lot easier. So this the system is slightly chunkier than Arch. Now, Compared to every other system out there, it is a very lightweight system. You can see I'm only using 200 megabytes of my RAM uh, out of 2 gig of RAM that I've given it on this virtual machine and it's flying along perfectly. Boot time is speedy and as far as stability goes, I'm actually surprised in that most of these applications are very well behaved and I haven't noticed any serious problems as far as applications crashing or misbehaving. And for a stable distribution, you do have some very recent software in here as well. So who is this Linux distribution for? Well, I would recommend this distribution for anybody who's wanting to learn more about their system. They've been running Linux for say about a year or so, and they're wanting to learn more about how this operating system works and what it's capable of. Manjaro is a great bridge. It's an awesome way to introduce yourself to Arch Linux and the wonderful world of the Arch user repository and all of the software that's available. Once users are comfortable managing, fixing, maintaining, and enjoying their own Manjaro install, then I would definitely recommend trying out Vanilla Arch, as that's going to give you a much more homegrown and organic kind of feel. Overall, I'm going to give Manjaro a very solid mark. Numerically, I would give it about an 8.5 out of 10, simply because some of the theming is a little bit sketched. It's not really their problem, but again, it could do with a little bit more polish, as they are aiming to be a user-based distribution, not so much a cutting-edge technology type distribution. And first impressions always help the user get comfortable in their new system. Package management works. They've simplified it considerably from the default Arch experience. And the default selection of applications is very comfortable as well. So overall, I think Manjaro Linux bridges a very nice middle ground between the simplicity of Arch and of course, a, the pleasure of a pre-setup uh, distribution. 
Once again, be sure to leave a comment down below of your thoughts and comments on Manjaro Linux and of course Arch Linux if you are so inclined. Give the video a thumbs up because ratings always help the channel. And I shall see you all in the very next video. Hopefully I'm going to be doing a few more Android videos, but again, not at the expense and the regularity of the Linux videos. If you like this content on a regular basis, feel free to subscribe and I shall catch you all later. Peace out ladies and gentlemen.